Hey y'all, so about a month ago, I posted a video on this tank. This is my kitchen tank, the 16 gallon water box and the java fern and all the perforations, all the holes, the necrotic or dead tissue on the leaves. Uh, and I was wondering why. Originally, uh, initially I'd been fertilizing with uh, API leaf zone and recently I had switched to uh, Aquarium Co-op Easy Green because I ran out of the API and I thought I'd give that one a try. Uh, it seems like it's got a, a more in the analysis uh, than the API leaf zone. Neither turns out to have any potassium. Um, API root tabs do have potassium, but there's no real way to, to use those for epiphytic plants that I can think of, and I don't want to just dump the stuff in the water. Uh, we're also seeing the same thing going on on the Anubias down here. So when I posted that video, several people chimed in uh, as a potassium deficiency. And doing a little bit of looking, turns out that makes sense. And the only, well, the one place I found it, I looked in, you know, uh, the API leaf zone. I looked in uh, the Easy Green, neither had any potassium in the analysis. So I went looking for potassium and I found this uh, Flourish Potassium. And then after reading the back here, uh, it's talking about signs of deficiency in older leaves, which include chlorosis, that's yellowing, uh, necrosis, death browning, uh, and then pinholes, no shortage of pinholes, okay? And um, weak stems. Well, I'm not really seeing weak stems in, in either the um, Anubias or the Java fern but I'm certainly seeing a fair share of this, the necrosis, the death and browning, and pinholes. So I'm gonna try this flourish, and it says uh, one cap full, five milliliters, for every 125 liters, or 30 US gallons. So this is 16 gallon tank. I'm gonna go with about a half a cap full. It should be about right. It's actually gonna be less than 15 gallons of water, isn't it, because it's got rocks in it, and it's got about an inch and a half, maybe pushing two inches of substrate. So, but I, a little more. And it also says to do this two to three times a week or as needed in response to signs of everything I just read. Uh, so we're gonna try that uh, and, and we'll see how the results come back. Now I just did a water change. That's what the bucket's there for. And after the water change, I used the API tap water conditioner and uh, the CO2 boost, also API and then the uh, easy green fertilizer. All right, so we're assuming, based on what it says, this five mils in the cap, so I said about half of that. Well, let me back up on something. Shake well. I don't know if there's any sediments in this or not, but it's always a good idea to shake the chemicals well before, uh, before you use them, in case there are any kind of sediments. Yeah, that might be a little over. That's a full cap. Now it goes on to tout uh, the benefits in naturally planted tanks, or so or natural planted aquariums is what it says. Uh, so we're going to go with this and see. So I overdosed it for the first. I don't know if we can actually call that a loading dose or if we're going to get in trouble doing it. There are uh, neocaridinas in here, and that's the only thing I really worry about. The fish should be fine. Um, there are, I think there's uh, 17 neon tetras now. Another one jumped, so I started with 21. So that's four jumpers. Yeah, so 17. And then there are six albino quarries. Um, another video. Um, and then there's uh, uh, three clown plecos and three uh, autocyclists, so they should all be fine. So we'll see, and I, you know what, I'm also starting to notice the pinholes, there's a crypt around the other side. Let's go see that. Actually, it might be easier to see it from this side. There's usually a lot of glare on the other side, but you can see the pinholes in uh, 
in those leaves, a little, little spot of daylight coming through. Shouldn't be there. So hopefully it'll help the crypts too. Just started showing up in those. So this must be a serious issue um, for this, you know, this potassium deficiency to show up like this. So it also goes on to say, um, potassium can become depleted in a rapidly growing system or when the source of water has a low mineral content. Uh, in these cases, potassium could become the limiting factor to growth. Use flourish potassium, there's their pitch, to prevent potassium depletion, signs of which include yellowing in older leaves uh, and, maintain, yeah, and maintain the highest level of growth. Flourish potassium is safe for invertebrates such as shrimp. All right, so we should be good there. Um, and it's 6% potassium soluble potash, uh, K2O, um, and it's derived from potassium sulfate. So I'm going with safe. Uh, I see a lot of people using uh, Seachem products. Um, this isn't sponsored in any way, shape, or form. Regardless, we'll see how this works. We'll get back. So I'm going to do this like it says every... Uh, uh, Two, well, two to three times a week, you know, the way I do things. I might, I'll try and do it twice a week. Hopefully that'll start to show a difference. Now, one thing you've got to remember that these damaged leaves in no way are going to recover. They'll, they'll eventually just die off, but hopefully new growth will be healthy, happy. And as the new growth ages, we won't see the pinholes or the yellowing. So we'll give it a shot. So thanks for looking.